Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word today, Leviticus chapters 13 and 14, two very long chapters that are seemingly irrelevant. Now, I will agree they are long, but they're very relevant. Verse 14, verse 57 of chapter 14, to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. All right, so these two chapters are about a whole lot more than the issue of skin, okay? Verse 1, chapter 13, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling, a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes on the skin of his body like a leprous sore, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priest. The priest shall examine the sore on the skin of his body, and if the hair on the sore has turned white and the sore appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a leprous sore. Then the priest shall examine him and pronounce him unclean. Now the word here for leprous is seraoth. It is uh, translated leprosy, but it encompasses skin diseases, mildew or mold on clothing and in buildings. So, in reading these two chapters, you might come up with a few questions, at least I did. I mean, for instance, why so much focus, two very long chapters, on skin disorders? I mean, why? What's the point? Number two, why did the people go to the priest? Why didn't they go to the pharmacy? Why didn't they go to the doctor? Number three, What's the underlying spiritual message or application for us? And by the way, that's something we should always be asking when we read these passages. Remember, as Paul wrote to Timothy in his very last letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said, All Scripture is breathed, by, breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now keep in mind when Paul was writing that, that they had the Old Testament. There were some of the letters starting to circulate to the churches, but it was the Old Testament that was recognized as the Scripture of God. And so that includes the book of Leviticus. And, this, and, and Paul was talking about Christians, okay? He wasn't talking about just those that were practicing Judaism. He was, talk, he was speaking to Christians who were following Jesus Christ. And so the, all Scripture had relevance to them, and it has relevance to us. So before I get into those questions, and I'm going to answer them here in just a moment, let me, let me kind of give a, an outline, an overview. I'm not going to read uh, all of these, these two chapters. We wouldn't have time. I'm going to give you an overview of the two chapters and then a couple observations. So chapter 13, verses 1 through 46, deals with the skin plagues. All right, all the different plagues of the skin. Verses 47 through 59 deal with the plagues related to garments. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 32, deals with the cleansing ritual. Okay, note that this was not a healing ritual. It was a spiritual cleansing after an infection or a disease. Chapter 14, verses 34 through 53, deal with plagues in homes or buildings, how that was to be dealt with. Now, you'll notice that there was a very present concern with the spreading of plagues, of infections or diseases, or whatever it may have been. But you'll also notice that the protocol laid out here in this passage was to isolate the infected or the one suspected of an infection, not the entire community, okay? Well, it, it, it's secondary to our look at uh, this passage, which I'm about to get to. There are some very practical aspects of this chapter here in Leviticus that I think we might take for granted. Number one, look at this, personal hygiene factors factors prominently into uh, Leviticus. I mean, some of these things, we, we again, we take for granted today, but it took centuries for the world of science to catch up with what's laid out here in Leviticus. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to prevent the spread of diseases. And it wasn't until the middle of the 19th century that a uh, Hungarian doctor, Ignis Simovice uh, discovered the connection between bad health outcomes and the lack of hand washing. All right, I mean, it was here all the time. And that's one of the reasons during the plagues that the Jewish communities weren't affected as much. And so they were viewed with suspicion, but they had hygiene, they had standards that God had given them that were 
healthy. Now, just a side note here, had our government officials, with all their advanced knowledge, turned to the wisdom of Scripture during the COVID pandemic, we might have had different outcomes. I mean, just think, if uh, those living in the time of the writing of Leviticus had responded to a suspected plague, as our government did to COVID-19, they would have all died, not from the plague, but from starvation. Now, we are fortunate we survived, but it took a toll mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally um, on Americans. And it took a toll on our economy, which we're still trying to recover from. But that is not what I want to focus on. So very quickly, let's turn to those questions I raised. The underlying message here is not about skin. It's about sin, S-I-N. I know that is not a commonly used term these days and an ongoing prosecution. And I know you've probably, if you listen to Washington Watch, you've uh, actually heard Pave on my program or you've heard me talk about a member of the, she's a member of the parliament in Finland and she was accused of engaging in hate speech for tweeting a Bible verse from Romans. And the prosecutor, who's after her again, said that the use of the word sin, S-I-N, can be harmful. And so therefore, it, she shouldn't be allowed to do it. It's hateful speech. The truth is, here's the truth, not using the word sin can be harmful. In fact, it can be deadly. As Paul writes over in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. So leprosy in the Bible is a picture of sin. Yes, it was a physical issue, but it illustrates for us the effects of sin. How so? Let me read uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now, in Jesus' own description of what he did for the lepers, he, he didn't say that he healed them. He said that he cleansed them. Now, back uh, in 2 Kings, or forward, because we're not there yet, but 2 Kings chapter 5, we read of Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army, coming to Elisha to be healed from leprosy. And look what Elisha says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10. He says, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. So leprosy was treated as it was, it was spiritually, it made them unclean, but it symbolizes something for us. How leprosy was treated gives us insight into how sin should be treated. The priest and the spiritual leaders examined and they isolated the leprosy so what, so for what reason? So that it wouldn't spread. You know, a, another parallel, another example to use is, is that sin is like leaven. It's like yeast. As Paul wrote, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Sin, when, when sin, what, what it does here in the leprosy, what it did, same thing sin does, it, it isolates from us from fellowship with others. But more importantly, it isolates us from fellowship with God. Someone who had leprosy was cut off completely from the community and, more importantly, from the tabernacle, which was the place of worship. It was the presence of God. So remember, the Old Testament speaks to the physical, whereas the New Testament speaks to the spiritual. So we have two very long chapters with detailed guidance on how to deal with leprosy. And here's the bottom line. Leprosy was taken seriously. And the spiritual principle that we should take away from this passage is that we should deal with sin very seriously, lest it spread and become a pandemic. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And, and we do pray for the Holy Spirit to continue to teach us and guide us that we might know how to apply the spiritual principles of your word to our lives today. Lord, I know that there are a lot that mock your word ridicule your word, especially look at the Old Testament, it's antiquated. Lord, but we understand it, it, the, the Old Testament speaks to the physical where the New Testament to the spiritual. And these are spiritual principles that apply to our lives. And so we pray that the Holy Spirit would lead us into that understanding and help us, Lord, to be bold in our faith. That, Lord, we would 
if we would stand and speak truth so that others might come to know that truth and the freedom that comes from it. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, again, thanks for, uh, for being with me. And if you happen to be new to this, you can get the reading plan. You need to get it because it's chronological. You can text the word BIBLE to 67742. That's BIBLE to 67742. And you can get uh, a link to all the resources we have available for this two-year journey through the Bible. Until next time, keep standing on the Word.